this video, we're going to look at the absolute value function, or y equals the absolute value of x. That's what those vert vertical bars mean. I like to call this one the v graph, or the v function, because we'll see in a second, that's what this graph looks like. Whatever input you put into this function, the absolute value bars tell you to make it positive. Really, it's just telling you the distance that that number would be from zero on a number line. All right, so let's get started looking at this graph. We'll start by substituting in negative one, zero, and one for our x's. And so when you put in negative one for x, absolute value takes that and makes it positive. All right, well zero just stays at zero and one is already positive, so it stays at one. So let's go ahead and plot those points on this graph. We have negative one, one, zero, zero, and one, one. Okay, so hopefully you can see this V already. If you needed to plug in, say, negative two and two, you could do that as well. Both of those will output two. And you can see, here's your graph. A nice V shape. Okay, so let's look through and find some of the characteristics of this absolute va value function. So the domain, remember, is just a list of all the possible x's that can be. Look from left to right, and you'll be using interval notation to name all the x's. Okay, so when we do that, you can see starting from the far left of the graph, all x's are included. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so all real numbers is what we have going on here. And remember, we list that negative infinity to infinity in interval notation. Okay, so the range is a list of all the possible y values. So look from bottom to top, or the very lowest y value on your graph, and then on up. Okay, so we don't have anything down here. Our very first y value is this right here at the origin, zero. And then you can see as we would continue up, all y's are included, whether we're going and looking in the first quadrant or the second, but it'll be from zero to infinity. And we see that we do have this point on zero, zero. So we want to include zero as a possible y value. So use brackets. Remember, if you need some help with interval notation, check out um, our video on that. All right, so now we can list the intercepts. We see that both the x and y intercept are just the origin here. So zero, zero. All right, now we move on to symmetry. So remember, we have the two main types of symmetry you see in functions. You have y-axis symmetry, and we call those functions even. Then we have origin symmetry. So symmetry rotating 180 degrees about the origin, and that would make a function odd. So looking here, hopefully you can see that this graph almost looks reflected about the y-axis. So looking here, you can see we have kind of mirror images on both sides of the y-axis. Remember, you can look at the geometric definition of this as well for x, y that's on your graph, you should also have the point negative x, y. So basically x and negative x have the same y value and negative one and one are a great example of that. They both have y as their, excuse me, one as their y value. Okay, so this means absolute value function has y axis symmetry. And again, we can call this an even function. So now let's look at increasing and decreasing intervals for this absolute value function. So remember with naming intervals or describing intervals where you are increasing or decreasing, you should be using your x's to describe the behavior of your y's. So it's really helpful here to remember you should be moving from left to right. That's the standard way that we notate this. So it's just like you're reading, you look from left to right, and as your x's are increasing, you're talking about what your y's are doing. Okay, so let's get started. First, we'll name our increasing interval. So start by putting your pen or pencil 
on the leftmost part of your graph. And from here, just start moving from left to right. And you can see you're actually moving down or decreasing. So as your X's are increasing, your Y's are decreasing. So we would call this a decreasing interval. We'll come back to that. We see the behavior of that continues until we get to the origin. And then we have a change. Okay, so from our X value of zero here, as our X's are increasing from zero, you can see the Y's are also increasing and you should feel this is happening as you move your pencil because you are moving up. Okay, so remember we'll always use our X's when we are writing these intervals and the standard that we will use is always use parentheses when you're naming intervals that are increasing, decreasing, or constant. So we're not including that point of change or that endpoint. Um, this is the way that many textbooks do it. Many classes do it this way. Um, so if yours does it differently, of course, follow that. But parentheses will be what we use. Okay, so our increasing interval, we start with our x of 0. And we continue it on forever. That's where we're increasing on our graph. So now, of course, it makes sense that we already said we're decreasing on the other side. Let's look at that one more time. So always reading and writing from left to right. So we see that this graph, this arrow tells us it goes on forever in this similar behavior. So from negative infinity until we get back to zero, our graph has decreasing behavior. And so that's how we'll notate this. We'll say from negative infinity until zero. And this is where our graph is decreasing. All right, so that's a little bit more detail about the absolute value function, y equals absolute value of x, also known as the V.